Okay, I want to point out a few things um, that exist in BB10 or are improved in BB10 that are legacies to some extent of uh, the older Blackberries and, and some of the things that we appreciate uh, about these devices. Um, first is the, the durability of the, uh, the, the build quality. And you'll see from looking at this that you know there are some bubbles in my screen protector. I do have a screen protector on there. However, I often carry the thing buck naked or you know just in the leather holster. And uh, it's really, this material, I've been using it for six months. There's not a scratch on this thing. I've dropped it down subway stairs in New York City. You know, those, those comic book moments where it's like, no, and you see it go down the stairs in slow motion and you're, you know, it ends up like this and you're like, oh my God, my phone is broken. You pick it up and you're like, wow, there's not a scratch on this thing. So um, that continues to be a um, Blackberry birthright, if you will. Our stuff is durable. You know, it's not like these cheesy little phones that, that break every time uh, whenever you breathe on them wrong. So it's tough and it's nice and it doesn't scratch. I mean, you, you cannot scratch this material. I don't know what it is, but it's super high tech and that's great. Uh, so the build quality remains. Second, um, the holstering is still great. Uh, we still have holstering, and I'm not sure if BlackBerry has patents on this or why other platforms don't do it or don't do it as well. But um, we still have both holsters, flip case, and uh, of course the classic uh, leather. Um, and they both serve different purposes, which I'll talk about later. Um, but you know, holstering is great because what happens when you holster your phone, for one thing, it's protected, and I'll talk about the difference between these two holsters. Um, I like the flip case, and most days I do carry it in the flip case because it leaves the, uh, the HDMI out and USB ports available, as well as the earphone jack or aux out jack. Um, so I tend to use the flip case more. Uh, but the holster is just just as well, you know, I mean, it's just as good. So uh, the holster actually serves its purpose. And one thing I like about the holster is uh, that uh, my spark's not going off right now. But if you're at work or something and um, you're not going to be using your phone a lot, but you want to be aware of incoming communications that may not be related to work or may, your spark will still show even though your phone is holstered so you get the benefit of the you know battery saving deep sleep that the holster puts it into and you can still see when new stuff comes in even when you're in silent mode and as you can see the phone wakes up as it always has uh, when you unholster it so um, that's great the, the holstering continues the build quality is still good and the third point and this was one that I didn't notice at first it took me probably a month or two of using the phone before I realized this, but one of the things I missed about BBOS was how you could just start typing something. Like if I wanted to, to um, get someone's phone number, I could just start typing their name from any screen, you know, from the home screen, and, uh, and it would bring up their contact card, all my recent texts with them, you know, all that kind of stuff. And actually I was like, oh, why did they take that out? You know, what, what happened to type and go? It's... It's not there. Oh, I just did something wrong. I didn't need to do that. You can actually wake the phone up without hitting any buttons. Um, I have my, my alphanumeric password set to uh, 10 minutes, just like my LED, um, because I figure, you know, that gives me enough time to not have to enter my password 20 times a day. Uh, but, you know, any thief that manages to get their hands on my phone will probably not be able to open it because it will have been idle for that long. Anyway, <clears throat> um, got sidetracked. <laughs> the third thing, yes, type and go, universal search, is even better in BlackBerry 10. I don't know if you saw what I did there, but all you have to do is hit the search button, and uh, you know you can do it from anywhere, and it'll bring the search app right up. And the, the, by default, what shows is your most recently used apps, um, which is great. You know, it's kind of like on iOS or whatever, they have that stupid little tray in the bottom that shows your tombstoned apps. Um, these apps are actually tombstoned too, but uh, Qnix does it in a different way. This is an Android port. But check it out. This, I'm in a, a chess game and it's still there even though I closed the app. Don't believe me? Watch. 
freaking Android ports so slow. See, still there. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so the universal search still works great when you start typing something. It uh, it searches your contacts, your browser history, text messages, BBMs, emails, and if all else fails, you've got you know Maps and Reddit and Twitter. And, um, LinkedIn, Google, Yahoo, Bing, BlackBerry World. I wonder what happens if we search BlackBerry World for that. <laughs> I'm just curious. Um, jeans brands. We get some apps, some games, some artists, some albums, some tracks, some movies, some TV episodes, etc. Um, so yeah, three things. One, um, the holster exists. Build quality is freaking like beyond space age. I don't know what they made this out of, but it is very durable and very, very scratch resistant. Um, and uh, Universal Search is still your buddy. And of course, the Spark is still there. So BlackBerry users will appreciate those things. Users from other platforms will. You know, you guys just don't get it for the most part anyway. So, <laughs> sorry, I'll edit that part out. <clears throat> bye bye. Next up.